Over the past two years, we've explored the world of electric cars, manufacturers, and classic car conversions. But what happens when these three elements converge? Well, today, we're about to find out. So we're in the Midlands today to see RBW. This is RBW, but don't be fooled. This isn't just another EV conversion specialist. RBW produce new classic EVs. Let's join our host, Richard, as he takes us on an exclusive tour with RBW's managing director, Peter Swain, uncovering the secrets behind the perfect fusion of past and future. Um, Peter, do you want to uh, talk us through the history of uh, RBW to where you are today? Sure, yes. Well, welcome. You're in RBW in the Midlands. Um, RBW is a labour of love for me. It's a family business. Rose, Becky and Wes are RBW, my three children. Um, and we've evolved. We started as a classic car business seven years ago. We got into electrification early adopters six years ago, working with people like Continental Engineering Services and Hyperdrive for batteries. And we've evolved a system, a safe system, that's allowed us to bring cars back to market, but as brand new cars. So we have CAN systems and safety systems and Apple AirPlay and modern suspension. Our vehicles just look vintage, but they actually are a modern drive with all the safety standards, and that's critical to us. Excellent, let's go and have a look. So here we are in the workshop and um, we've got a second workshop where we do our bodies and body in white and our own paint. But we start with a raw product which comes from British Motor Heritage. That goes through our other factory, it's dipped, it's painted and we have two options, we either de-seam it or we keep the seams on. It then comes into our electrification business. It starts here, it's put onto its glider and the glider then will follow a route around the business. So we start with the very basics, bumpers go on, we check all the paintwork and we start to put the braking system in, okay. This, this actual coloured car here is a 1956 MGA colour, this is going to Hong Kong. It then starts its route round, what the build route, and we have six pulse builds. So the next stage for us is to fit the wiring harnesses and the door harnesses. And you can see this is no ordinary classic vehicle. We have all the modern CAN buses and wiring harnesses that allow us to, uh, to call this a proper modern vehicle. We then continue our journey with more fit out here. So we've got the, 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 the brakes going in, we've got the, uh, the coolant going in, the radiator that goes in the front grille. We then go over here, we haven't got a car at the moment, but this is where the patented drivetrain goes into the rear of the vehicle and the batteries go in. and we end up with a finished vehicle after the next stage, which is uh, the interior going in the testing. Once the vehicle's complete, it goes on the rolling road. It then goes off for driving test. So here we are with what looks like uh, a 1960s MGB. Um, however, I don't think it is, is it? No, we call it the RBW Roadster. So yes, it's a 60s car, but we've modern modified it for the future. So, brand new body shell, new and body pretty shell. much brand new everything. Brand new running gear, brand new everything. So, the vintage look, the modern drive, or as we like to say, plug and play. So, this is the battery box. It fits where the engine and gear box did. On the same pickup points, that's great for strength. 42 kilowatts, range, between 160 and 200, real world 160, 200 if you want to drive like Miss Daisy. So this is the rear of the vehicle, obviously the charging point, which is where the original petrol cap was. And this is chrome when we finished, but this is our test one. But interestingly, you can see the, the modern uh, setup of the rear of the vehicle, which actually allows for a seventh battery cell to go in here. Uh, which gives us an extended range. Now, I have to be very honest with you, uh, we sell all our cars with the six batteries and the seventh an option, and we say to our clients, come back if you want a further range, but no one's come back yet. Um, so we're thinking that we've got it right, 
Um, but when someone comes back, we will eventually put a seventh battery in. It's all tested, it's all ready to go. But our clients are happy with 160 miles a day, and I think in this sort of vehicle, that's perfect. On the subject of battery and range, etc., uh, what are we looking at for charging times? Uh, this, has, this has a seven hour charge, um, so not fast, but you've got to balance that with safety again. So we've never had a thermal event, we use the cells from hyperdrive. Um, we are going to faster charging this year, we're going to go um, to three hours. But at the moment, as I say, people just leave their cars plugged in overnight on a very slow trickle charge in a very safe way and, uh, and then do the miles the next day. We do have people ask for faster charging. And I think we all have to be honest with each other. This is a everyday car for the city and an 80, 160 mile round trip. If you want to go up the motorway to Glasgow, which is a question I'm always asked, I can't get to Glasgow, it's not a car for you. It's just not that market. Um, you know, I, I don't think even my Tesla's that market. Drive to the train station and get on the train. But 100, 160 miles round trip, with the average mile, miles in a car per day in the UK, is it seven miles? 7.8 7.8 so it's plenty but not fast charging and until we do the full test on the batteries which will take us up to 12 months we're not going to put it in RBW EVs has not only opened up job opportunities for hundreds of local specialists but also creating an apprenticeship scheme with nearby colleges and universities now let's hear from the man behind the scheme supporting young local talent, Managing Director Ian Mills, as he shares how RBW EVs is sparking a brighter future, not just for electric vehicles, but for their community's workforce. So this is Ian, he's uh, Managing Director of RBW. Uh, he's been with us six months, although he's worked on this project from the start. And uh, as we are saying, Ian's responsible for the apprentices. And uh, Ian, tell us why. Well, having been a, an engineering apprentice myself, I think it's very important to sort of homegrown your own, own talent. Ultimately, you can't just go in and select somebody out of, out of the pool of workforce to do very bespoke type roles that we do here. So what better than to engage within our local college, Warsaw College, to, to grow and to work with their course and to a, apply our elements of our vehicles to their course as well. This is a two-way street we've got going and ultimately, to be able to bring in the talent, to grow the talent. This is mechanical, this is electrical, this is also body and, body and fabrication work. So we have a multi-genre of skill set that we take from Warsaw College, and it's been a really good beneficial element to, to both elements so far. Now back to electric car builds. Ian takes Richard on a tour of the underbody and drivetrain of the new RBW GT. So it's obviously this is in replacement for the original live rear axle that was on the original MG vehicle. So we have the, uh, the, the motor and the reduction gearbox here. It's all held within a rear subframe with double wishbone suspension, all coilovers, fully adjustable, rides, damper rate, etc. And the benefit of this, this is a patented system to RBW. The benefit of this is that all of the torque and the instant torque generated by the electric motor, as we all know, electric motors have very, very fast response of, of, of instant torque. This keeps all of the torque and all of the torque reaction within this, within this subframe to stop the transmission of any unwanted stresses, strains, torques going throughout the original body shell. Do you actually use the original anchor points? Absolutely, absolutely. They, these were the original uh, leaf spring hangers and there's the other hangers based, based at the top. So this is held in within about 16 volts, so fully Fully transferable to other types of classic vehicles with a little bit of a mechanical integration, obviously, but this is bespoke to this vehicle, but this has been designed and scaled to be compatible to other types of, uh, of classic, classic vehicles. So when you actually increase the power of the motor, I'm assuming you also have to increase the stopping capacity? Yeah, absolutely. We've uh, utilised a, a, a disc brake on the rear, aligned with, a, with a, also a, a larger disc brake on the front. And what that means is that because this was from the same OEM family of braking system, We've got a really well balanced, well matched element with, that would, would have been designed through a, a mainstream OEM. Also, the wheel, the wheel houses houses this. We've got various sizes of wheel, but we do we use a split rim wheel for lightness. So obviously, the unsprung weight's trying to keep that as light as possible, and but to maintain the wheel track. So, given a, it's, these cars are rear engines, how do you actually get that weight distribution? 
Well, that's, that's a really interesting point, and that's a lot of engineering has gone into that, because obviously we want to design a really well-balanced, good handling and fun, fun car. So ultimately, there's no point in doing all that really good engineering on the rear to maintain the original front suspension. There's no kingpins on here. This is all, again, double wishbone suspension, all fully, fully adjustable, right, uh, ride height and, and damper rate. But ultimately, this maintains um, no original elements of the front of the front suspension apart from this this original cross member everything else is bespoke designed when we do the weight weight distribution make sure that we get 50 50 the first initial challenge is we put a standard car on on, on the wheel weight on the corner weight sorry to make sure that uh, where the where our baseline is and what we've actually done with this vehicle is we've improved and sent it closer to 50 50 it's very close to 50 50 which makes it a really fun handling good driving vehicle Based on our original platform, it's obviously a lot of the components are complete carryover, but with obviously these beautiful lines of the GT that was very common back in the 60s and 70s, what we are finding is that this type of vehicle, people are, are tending to utilise it in urban, in areas where there may be a bit you know, more issues with having security of a, of, a, of a road to parts on the street maybe overnight. So, and more of a sort of a racing heritage, this. It's a, it's a beautiful looking and the lines of this vehicle we believe are still, are still beautiful and it's, it's, got, it's a really popular following. We've got lots of people interested in this model. So that was RBW HQ. Now there's only one more thing to do. Let's go for a drive and see the RBW Roadster in action. This car really does marry the perfect combination of classic looks and modern drivetrains. And a car that looks like this wouldn't have had electric windows. All the traditional fiddly buttons that you would normally find on a car of this age have actually now been replaced with very modern single touch buttons. Obviously the automatic drive selector. You've got Apple CarPlay, clearly digital displays showing state of charge. So whilst it's been amazing to drive the car today, there's no point showing you footage from the outside because in traditional English weather, it's absolutely chipping it down. But instead, here's some shots from the summer. And there you have it, RBW.